Today I'll be taking you through how to answer the map skills question from June 2021 question paper 22 of the IGCSE Cambridge Geography exam. How you can use this video? Well, this video will show you how to complete this, these particular questions in the exam. It will offer you hints and tips on how to approach these questions. So my advice, with the, if you have the exam paper in front of you, follow, complete at the same time, and then have a go at doing another past question. So just to recap what the map skills question involve, it's 20 marks out of possible 60, it's compulsory. You are, I would recommend spending about 30 minutes completing it. And although most questions tend to be about settlements, maybe some rivers, you, they can also throw in from topics as well, other topics as well, such as coastal tourism. Now, various equipment that you will need for your exam, a tractor to work out bearings, a ruler for distances and useful for the six figure grid reference, a pencil, to draw the cross section and maybe to mark on the map the various figures and lines that you might be have to refer to a rubber in case you make a mistake and for maybe distances a calculator now before starting the exam i recommend that you draw this onto your map a compass with the various bearings and the direction because it'd be very useful when answering a couple of questions so make sure you obviously start off north and south east and west Northwest, southeast, northeast, southwest. Now, for the bearings in between, these are quite simple to work out. You always start off with the main direction, so north, south, east, or west, and then you bolt on either northeast, depending where you need to go. So, for the one in between north and northeast, it'd be north, northeast. Between north and northwest, north, northwest. At the bottom, again, between south and southeast, south southeast, and between south and southwest, south southwest. Now, for the ones between northeast and east, for example, well, start off with east, then you're going southeast, so east southeast, or west southwest, east northeast, or west northwest. Quite hard to remember, but try and learn this off by heart because, again, it's very useful, and you'll see some of the questions that you do actually need to give quite a specific bearing. Now, before starting any exam paper, there are two things you need to sort of circle or be aware of. First off, it's the scale, because if the map is one centimetre, it's 25 centimetres in real life. That means that one centimetre on the map is 250 metres in real life. And the contour line interval, really important when answering the relief questions and other questions like that. OK, so for these questions, the first map skills question always starts off with you have an extract and you have to work out what the various features are from that extract. Now remember that the map has the same dimensions as the figure, or the figure from the exam paper is the same dimensions as the map. So draw a box around the map so you can have that area focus your attention and also circle the features that you can see. So here's feature A, feature B, C and D. Okay, so now you need to match up carefully the, the letter, the symbol or whatever's been marked with the key that's found at the bottom of the map. So if we take feature A, it looks like a, a, it's a, it's a road. So we follow the road to make sure we, we know and we confirm it's the road. And then we work out what that road means from the key. So here's the key from the map. And so that road, it looks like a thick orange bar. And so because it's the second symbol along, we choose the second option, which means regional road. For feature B, we find that symbol. Okay, so it's not the first one, second or third, it's the fourth one. And again, it's the fourth label along, so that means tennis. Feature C. Okay, we need to look at the various land use. So, and also feature D requires us to look at land use as well. So for feature C, it looks like it's a mixed forest. And for feature D, an open forest. So let's just double check the mark scheme. And yeah, there we go. So remember, take it nice and slowly. The order in which the symbols appear, it's the same as the order in which their definition is or what they mean on the on the right hand side as well. Okay, another type, similar type of question might require you to look at a settlement, work out its functions, in this case this is a tourist town, and then think about three services provided for those tourists, like you can see here. So what do you mean by tourist service? Well really these are shops, facilities, infrastructure that have been built to support the tourism industry. So for example, campsites, museums, cycling routes, hiking routes, hotels, etc. And remember, the question is asking us to focus one kilometre from that particular city centre. 
So here's the points, and this is, and if you look at the scale, it's one centimeter on the map represents 25,000 centimeters in real life, or in other words, one centimeter on the map equals 250 meters. And again, four centimeters therefore would mean would equal one kilometer. One of these grid squares is a kilometer long, so we're looking at we're focusing on this area. And so for this, we're looking at tourist services. So a good place to start is the key and think of all the different places that you can see on the key that are tourist centers. So anything pretty much on the right hand side would be really useful. And so if we can see evidence for that. We're going to make a note. So if we look at this, remember, I'm going to sort of highlight any particular services. So we can see a campsite. I can see a tourist information center and a seaside resort. I can also see some hiking trails. So they are my three, my four um, services. You can see the hiking trail there marked by CR34. And again, if I look at this, all of them will be marked on. And I just need to select three. Another question that's quite common in these particular um, map skills is that we have to compare two areas. And so what I would do is I would draw that area on there. I find it on the map and draw it around and we've got the second area here. And essentially we are looking at playing a spot the difference. So if I take the first symbol, which is dam, I'm looking for this symbol. So at the moment I can only see that in this figure. So I'm going to put my tick in that box. For land over 25 meters, Again, I need to look at the contour lines and I would find maybe using spot heights to help me or any thick bars on the contour lines. And the only one I can see that is above 20 centimeters is this spot height here. And there's very few contour lines in the other location. So again, I can say it's area in figure 1.3. A bathing place, symbol for a bathing place is this. So can I see that on the right hand side? No, nope, because that looks like it's in the hills or far away from the coastline, but I can in figure 1.2. So I put my tick there. And for a railway, the symbol for a railway is the, the first symbol on the left. Well, it doesn't really matter. And that is a, th a black line. And it is in neither of these areas. And so when I check the answers, there we go. So again, work out what the symbol is or what it's asking you to do. Find evidence or not. And then tick to take it nice and slowly and steady. Another common question that they ask is working out the distance. It could be a distance along a road, on a curved road, or a straight line distance. In this case, we're lucky that actually it's a straight line road that we're asking to calculate. So we work out what the start point and end point are. We check the scale of the map, which in this case is one centimeter equals 250 meters in real life, or four centimeters equals one kilometer. And so if we look at the grid square, yep, four centimeters. So the length of one grid of side of the grid square is a kilometer. And so if we put our ruler along the map, we're looking at 11.6 kilometers, uh, centimeters, sorry. And so if we times up by 250 meters, that gives us an answer of about 2,900 meters. And so the closest answer to that is this one. We check the mark scheme and there we go. Another common question is to work out the bearings and the compass direction of a particular, of between two places. In this case, so to do that, you will need your protractor. So we're going to use the compass direction along that road. So we're going to do them both at the same time. So we've got the start points and we've got the end points. So we're going from the top town and we're going down to the bottom town. So that's where we're ending. And that's really important when working out our bearing because we're going to put the north arrow at the start and on the map, I'm going to draw a faint line along the road if just to help me focus a bit more. So I asked you at the start to draw a 16 point compass with bearings. And again, that's really useful because when I get my my um, protractor and I put naught facing the north arrow and work around, you can see I have a bearing of 124 degrees. When I put that onto my um, compass, the compass direction gives me something between east, southeast or southeast. I'm going to go with the east, southeast. And so when we check the mark scheme, again, southeast or east, southeast, it's fine. I would recommend that you write out east, southeast because some mark schemes require you to do that. So always give an excuse not to take the mark away by writing east southeast you should be fine and then the bearings 124 degrees perfect it's within the tolerance level and then often they would ask you to work out the six-figure reference in this particular case we need to work out this six-figure reference for the roundabout 
So we find the grid square is in, and then we work out the four figure grid reference. So we go side um, numbers, so we go along the corridor to the number that's in lines, that's 93, and then we go up the stairs and that's 70. And so we need to work out the third and sixth number. So for a six figure reference, and given the scale of this, um, of this map, so for every four millimeters along the grid square, and all up the grid square represents one point for the third and sixth number. So if I take 93, I take my ruler, I'm going along to 0.9 centimeters. So I divide that by four, that gives me a mark of approximately two. So I write 93, two. Okay, so we've got 932. Now we need to work out the number that comes after 70. So again, that's the sixth number. So remember, for the six-figure difference for this particular map, four millimeters, every four millimeters equals one point. So for the 70, I put my ruler up against the grid side of the grid square. I mark on where it comes to. So that's roughly about two to 2.1. I divide that by four. And that gives me a response of five. So I'm going to write 75, and to my answer being 932705. Check the mark scheme. There we go. Okay, so a common question would be identifying natural features of a of a coastline in this particular case. So to do that, we need to remember what we mean by natural features and human features. And the key to these questions is that we have to remember is what we can see on a map. You cannot see waves, you cannot see tides unless marked, and you cannot see water currents. So it's only from what we can see from above. So we can see landforms such as mudflats, wave cut platforms, bays coves, possibly headlands, spit bars and bolos, deltas, and cliffs, caves, arched stacks and stumps, and obviously beaches. The human features, we're pretty much looking at what they have built, so harbours or ports, coastal defences such as groins, offshore breakwaters, seawalls, or maybe artificial islands. So if we take an example here, we can see that they've built a port, which is a human feature, and again a seawall, and maybe some natural features such as a beach, a cliff, anything like that. So if we come to this question, what you can see here is I've identified, I've just labelled on a few of the physical features such as small islands, a spit in a marsh, beach or a bay, lagoon or a cove. So if I take those and put them into a nice paragraph, I can say that there are many beaches found along this coastline such as the one, the Grand Platte. The beaches tend to be found within bays and bordered by headlands. A small cove has been formed in 9265. So I've used uh, some four-figure references just to show the examiner I can interpret a map. And if I continue with all these points stating there's a spit and where there's a spit there's a marsh with some small islands and a coastal lake of some varied sizes, check the mark scheme. And all of those have been marked on. So use mapped evidence. I had a look, tried to identify, circled even various natural features, and then put them into some nice paragraphs. Straightforward five marks. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. Please do leave any feedback in the comments. And just remember before we go, drawing any boxes or lines from the figures from the exam paper onto the A3 map that helps you focus what you need to do. Draw on a compass with the bearings before you start the exam. Identify the scale and contour line interval and take it slowly. And of course, practice.